A stranger is yelling porridge through someone's letterbox every night. There are Bigfoot warnings in the Pennsylvania parks. And in China, the younger generation is taking their robot dogs out for walks. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet. I'm Jonesy. Let's go. Residents have been tormented by a stranger shouting porridge through their letterbox. A disgruntled resident has been tormented by a stranger screaming the words porridge through his letterbox. Porridge. It happens in the middle of the night, this individual says, and it includes variations of porridge. Uh, For example, sometimes the stranger will yell porridge time, Papa Bear and other variations. The mystery neighbor has been shouting strange things about porridge through his letterbox at very strange hours in the Yorkshire town of Halifax for the past three weeks. Three weeks, someone's been screaming porridge, and this this man is at his wit's end. He's pleading with the porridge whisperer to please stop yelling porridge through his letterbox immediately. The man wrote on social media, quote, Apologies if this post is not allowed here, but I just, I want to get to the bottom of this, and I'm at my wit's end. I live at Range Court Flats in Booth Town, and for the past three weeks, someone is opening my letterbox flap in the middle of the night and shouting, Porridge! Sometimes it's porridge time, Papa Bear. Or once it was, eat the porridge before it goes goes cold, Papa. It's my special porridge, Papa. Before you ask... No, porridge had not been left out at any times. This is unclear. Uh, The unwelcome visitor, I wish, would just stop it ASAP. And if this is you and you're reading this, please grow up and stop yelling porridge through my letterbox. (laughs) Now, the post on social media got a lot of attention. A thousand shares, hundreds of comments and likes. The majority of the people saw the funny side of this whole bizarre situation. Someone wrote, Hey, man, watch out. It could be a serial killer. Ah, 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 ah. Another person wrote, I'd get my locks changed just in case. I recommend Goldilocks. Hey. Others were very concerned. They thought this should be treated seriously. Uh, Several posts were offering advice to this upset, annoyed man. Someone wrote, "Uh, am I the only person that feels sorry for this guy? Worst crime in my eyes, feeling unsafe in your own home. I hope it stops soon, man. Someone else wrote, I found it funny to read at first, but that's actually pretty creepy. It would definitely freak me out at night. Someone else wrote, buy a wildlife camera. It records when motion, and you will have your culprit on video, and then you can crack down on him. I have a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, does the neighbor enjoy being called Papa Bear? I think that's... um. I think it's nice to be called Papa Bear in certain situations. It's pretty flattering. Also, uh, does porridge still exist? I I don't even know it still existed. (laughs) And, you know, I wouldn't be mind being called porridge if they would just leave me some porridge. I'd like to try it. I don't know if I've ever had porridge. Um, It sounds like a very archaic dish. The other thing I'd like to know, is this like some sort of code for sexual deviancy? Is it like a euphemism? If someone says, yo, bro, I shouted porridge in your mom's letterbox last night. Does that mean like, you know, got it on with my mom? (laughs) I want to know. At the end of the day, I would actually welcome someone just yelling porridge underneath my front door. uh, Considering the other possibilities when you live in Los Angeles, um, people will just reach through your letterbox and stab you in the throat over here. I don't know if you're aware. (laughs) Pennsylvania park officials have to release a statement about the Bigfoot warnings. Park officials in Pennsylvania say they don't know who's been posting signs warning of Bigfoot activity in the area, but it's not them. This is not an official Bigfoot warning from the Pennsylvania Parks Department. Uh, It's from a mystery individual or possibly an organization, or maybe it's from Bigfoot her or himself. I don't know what is a big Bigfoot could be a male or female, or maybe the Bigfoot identifies as non-binary. There could be non-binary Bigfoots, I'd imagine. They also threw some cold water on the notion that Sasquatch might be making a home in the Keystone state of Pennsylvania or anywhere else for that matter. Wesley Robinson is the press secretary for the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Wesley wants everyone to know, quote, guys, Bigfoot, it's not real. 
Bigfoot's not real. The signs state that there have been some encounters in the area and calls on visitors to, quote, observe elevated park etiquette, be cautious of your surroundings, and to keep the location of any small children and pets within a tighter scope of your awareness because of the Sasquatch. Uh, with a final warning, also you should know you do not approach the creature ever. Wesley Robinson added that these signs, which have been turning up for months in many of the Pennsylvania national parks, are being removed whenever they are spotted. Visitors have been posting images of the signs on social media, including one that drew a response from the Conservation Department, which runs the state's parks. Uh, they say that rangers are aware of the signs and are removing them, and they are investigating the situation. They also state very sternly that Sasquatch is not a real creature in the world. Uh, however, the agency's claim that Bigfoot is not real is unlikely to end this debate about the cryptid anytime soon, as searching for Sasquatch remains a very popular pastime in many parks around the nation. I'm curious personally to know if Bigfoot hunting is simply an American phenomenon. Do you guys go Bigfoot hunting over in Europe? I know you guys search for that Nessie. Are you onto the Sasquatch as well? Says here, Oklahoma lawmakers even proposed a Bigfoot hunting season. Oh, yes, I covered that. And it was complete with a cash prize. Not to kill the creature, just to find some evidence of it. They're always looking for Bigfoot crap and footprints. Occasionally, the Bigfoot will leave behind a Patriots jersey. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but yeah, Bigfoot is a, a big fan of the Pats. Um, one of the best qualities of Bigfoot is that Bigfoot is a big Patriots fan. Uh, while the majority of Bigfoot sightings seem to take place in the Pacific Northwest and California, Pennsylvania has actually had its share of Sasquatch activity over the years. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization has what they claim to be 124 credible sightings in Pennsylvania in their database, including someone who claims to have seen two of them and heard more of them whistling as well near his cabin in Harrison Valley. Yeah, I'm sure the Bigfoot's just whistling outside your cabin. That makes a lot of sense, sir, that you would hear whistling and immediately assume it's a Bigfoot. I once heard a car crash outside my apartment, and I immediately knew that it was a chupacabra, so I can relate. Now, I would like to think that this is a big joke someone's playing on uh, people that are adventuring in Pennsylvania's beautiful national parks. But then, it's hard not to discount the seriousness that some people take the Sasquatch. They really believe that it's out there, and some people have devoted their entire life for the search and discovery of Bigfoot. Funny how we have all these cell phones on us now, and we still can't get footage of a, of a real Bigfoot. It, it almost makes me believe that they're not real at all. <laughs> I mean, really, I don't know, maybe. I, I just, I mean, I, it's up in the air, guys, right? It's up in the air. Ah, damn it, I farted in the closet again. This is terrible. Ugh, I don't know if I can make it to the end. Yay! You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A growing trend in China is that younger generations are taking their robot dogs out for walks. Technology is advancing every day. We are adapting to it all at a very fast pace. Uh, as the pandemic hit the globe, people found new ways to maintain distance and go hassle-free with technology, from robots serving at some restaurants and hotels to machine dogs patrolling parks. Recently, some photos and videos of people walking robot dogs instead of actual canines have become a usual sight in China. Most of these people are from the younger generation, it says. These robot dogs that have become popular during the pandemic are now available on Chinese shopping platforms everywhere. However, these robot dogs can't be compared with real dogs, it says here. Real dogs are loyal and love humans unconditionally. Robot dogs are going to kill you eventually. According to Oddity Central, several Chinese news outlets have reported that the vast majority of robot dogs are spotted on the streets of Chinese cities such as Shanghai and Beijing, and they are domestically produced. They have a number of built-in features, such as they can roll over, they can sit, 
Ooh, they can run and carry weights of up to five kilograms. But can they poop? Even these robots have a camera installed in their heads to identify and bypass obstacles, and they even recognize people around them. The article asks the question, though. Why would a person want to have a robot dog as a pet instead of an actual one? Well, I'd imagine it's the pooping and the shedding. Uh, It says here there are many who want a hassle-free companion, and even though robots aren't perfect, but they're easier to maintain. How? Well, you don't have to clean up after them. They don't require any food. People don't have to worry about them when you're out on a long trip. What are the prices for these Chinese robot dogs? Well, they vary. From 15,000 won to 100,000 won. I'm going to have to do a a little Google on that. Oh, goodness, these aren't cheap. 100,000 won is over 13,000 USD. Uh, Says here they have a very good battery life and many built in features, such as you can probably program your robot dog to just dry hump everybody's legs. (laughs) That'd be some fun. (laughs) I love that idea. You could probably also. Ride them, I'd imagine. They could probably hold the weight of a human being. Imagine just riding your robot dog around town. That's pretty sweet. Probably also use your robot dog to pick up a robot girlfriend. Robot girlfriends are becoming more and more in demand as well. <laughs> I'm not against a robot girlfriend and a robot pet. Why the hell not? You never have to feed them. And you can program to kill an intruder. You know, These are very important qualities. Look, guys, we're in a very dire situation here. We're running out of fresh water. We have a drought, which means there's a food production shortage. So why not surround yourself with companions that never have to eat or drink water? I like where we're going here. Just we need to get the cost down. Uh, At one point, I covered a story about a robot cat that people were buying as well. Would you guys be down for a robot pet? I'd love to hear from you. 646-450-2012. Are you going to jump on the future train, guys? Oh, guys, we got through it. Even though I farted in the closet, I still pushed through. See, aren't I dedicated? The things I have to overcome to keep recording inside a closet, you have no idea. In the dead of summer when it was 187 degrees in here, and you can't escape a fart inside the closet, you really cannot. Uh, I want to thank everyone who reached out to me over the weekend, by the way. I hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday episode. I got some good feedback from it, and thanks to everyone who sent me Florida centric articles you can always send me stuff to funnyjones at gmail.com or you can slide into my dms on instagram at funny jones as well i got a nice review on apple podcasts by italian guy 0525 italian guy i suppose i should read this review in the voice of italian guy jonesy delivers i've been following jonesy for a while eh? rock on my friend hey i'm italian guy How about that? That's pretty good, right? No, that was terrible. I admit it. need to work on that. Uh, He told me to rock on, though, which is pretty cool. I like it when people tell me to rock on. It's a nice thing to say to somebody. And thank you for the five stars, Italian guy. Five stars. How about that? Appreciate that big time when you give me the five stars. That's what I'm living life for five stars, guys. (laughs) I love how... uh, the number of stars equals my um, self-esteem at this point in life. How sad is that? Well, if any of you would like to give me some stars and make me feel good and worthy as a human being, you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review or uh, Amazon as well, where there are various places. If you do leave a, re- a review, please just do a screenshot and send it to me. That way I it, make sure I get it because uh, I try to go to all these platforms, but... I see more and more places popping up where you can leave a review, and I had no idea. Next thing you know, there's like eight reviews that I didn't never even saw. So please screenshot or send me the link. I'd appreciate that. You, you got my email. Uh, lastly, if you would like to support the show, because uh, unlike the rest of the economy, you're doing well. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can go to my official website, weirdafnews.com, where you can click on a banner that says, Buy Jonesy a Coffee, which is like a one-time donation. Uh, and you can also join the Patreon. Patreon uh, can be a one-time donation, or it can be a subscription base where you buy Jonesy a cup of coffee a month, which is lovely. I'm transitioning right now from cold brew to hot coffee because the weather's kind of changing. So got the old French press out. You can also mail me coffee, coffee if you'd like. Just email me, and I'll give you my address. It's no problemo. Uh, 
So the Patreon can be joined by going to the website weirdafnews.com as well and clicking on the Patreon banner. Or you can download the Patreon app. They have an app and do a search for Weird AF News as well. It's pretty easy to support. And uh, if you don't have any extra ducats, it's always nice to recommend Weird AF News to a friend or a loved one or an enemy or whoever you come across on your daily trek to and from wherever you're going. Maybe it's prison. I don't know. Love you.